Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Bernie here along with Pete. Yo! And today guys, we have to bring you guys some interesting news and rumors that we've seen in the rumor mill. But before we get started on that, go and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Go and check out our Fixer Uppers. We'll have one next week. We'll talk about a different team next week, but go and check out our New York Knicks and our Phoenix Suns ones that we have out now. Now, the thing that we have to discuss is, of course, the rumor mill, and that is the 76ers are interesting in trading for Kawhi Leonard, mm -hmm. along with signing LeBron James. As we know, the coach came out and said that we're trying to get someone in free agency because yeah. we're interested in making our team a lot better. My question is, Let's first start off with the first part. LeBron James signing him. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for the 76ers? I mean, good in the sense that they're instantly going to make the NBA Finals. Mm -hmm. um, but I think long-term, I think it would be, not that this would be a long-term signing, but I think it would do a little bit of damage long-term to Ben Simmons because I think it's going to slow down his progression as a player mm -hmm. and possibly Joel Embiid. I don't think so much for him just because of his positioning, but Ben Simmons, I do think it's going to slow him down a little bit. And I, re I really think you need to get a supporting star, right? you know, and I think that's why maybe Kawhi is a little bit better. Not that he's necessarily going to be supporting and he's going to be second fiddle, but I think he's going to be a little bit less likely to be the guy who's going to take the reins out of Ben Simmons' hands than mm -hmm. LeBron is. I think earlier on in the season, I was one of the people who was like, yeah, you know, LeBron the 76ers would be a good idea. I, I kind of soured on the idea a little bit. Mm -hmm. I just think for these younger dudes, I, I don't think it, it benefits you enough it, for one season to sign him, right? Because I still don't think that makes them the best team in the NBA. I still think the, the Warriors are going to be the best team. And I just I just think it hurts Ben Simmons. What do you, what do you think about LeBron? See, uh, to me, I, I just think of it as I have no idea where LeBron fits in in any team. Mm -hmm. I just don't see him really going anywhere like Houston, like L.A., yeah. like Philly. I just don't see him fitting in any of those situations. I feel like no situation is good for him right now. He's just stuck in this weird part of his career where he's still one of the best players, mm -hmm. but he's not one of those players that a team would want to trade for yeah or he put on their team even though the, i'm sure you know the lower teams like the phoenix suns all those you know bottom dweller teams would love to have him on the team like for the contenders that we're talking about like the 76ers the houston rockets yeah. la potentially they can shape up that roster better he just to me it just i don't know where he really fits in anywhere maybe he just stays in cleveland because tonight's going to be the draft lottery they have a 10 percent chance of getting the first second or third pick could they could they get a little magic and then LeBron decides to stay? Magic, <laughs> the Cleveland magic, as we like to call it. Yeah, I think the best fit for LeBron is either Cleveland or a team that has a star who's already developed, yeah. but not like a clear star who's better than him, right? Or could mm -hmm. be better than him. Which is why I think the 76ers don't fit. I think, like you know, I had we talked about the whole the San Antonio Spurs recently. Yeah, is, that's my dream fit for LeBron, and I still stick by that one mm -hmm. because I do think. If they were to get rid of Kawhi, get some other pieces back, well, Marcus Aldridge is not going to expect to be the best player on the team if they sign LeBron, right? And he's not like a long-term investment really either. He's mm -hmm. in his 30s now, right? Or he's 29 or 30. So if you bring LeBron into that situation, he's the clear number one option. Or another just kind of out there option would be like the Pacers, right? Victor Oladipo is clearly a star, you know, but mm -hmm. he's not going to expect to be number one over LeBron. Yeah. I don't think he's ever going to go to the Pacers, but I do think it's a better fit than most of these teams that people want him to go to. I I, I don't like the 76ers really as an option anymore, just for him. I think it would be better for the Sixers not to sign him. Yeah, I mean, like, I, there is rumors, and I've heard from Chris Broussard, that they talked about LeBron James likes to play off. He wants to start playing off the ball now. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to bring up the ball so much because of how much energy it takes yeah. to really manifest the offense. So he would let Ben Simmons take the reins. But I still don't know if that's really the best thing for his career, even though, you know, the situation's different. Like, it, let's say, for example, the 76ers were in the conference finals mm -hmm. instead of the Celtics, and the 76ers end up beating them. Yeah. Or, you know, the Cavs win, but then they get blown out a gentleman's sweep by the Warriors. It just doesn't look good for his career in terms of his legacy, yeah. which I don't know if he really cares about. Because, you know, at the end of the day, a championship does kind of erase some of those negatives. 
certainly. So, but at the same time, I just don't know how I feel about LeBron on any team besides Cleveland, really. I mean, even though Cleveland has probably one of the worst rosters right now, it I just don't see... It's just tailor-made to be a LeBron team, yeah. right? And that's literally what they've done for the last five years is build the team to what LeBron wanted it to be, even though it's not very good. It is like it's all his boys, you know? Yeah. That's what it amounts to. Uh, let's talk about Kawhi, though. What do you think about that fit? I, I mean, we'll, Let's hear what you got. I think Kawhi's an interesting fit. Obviously, they'd have to trade for him. He's obviously making $17 million now. If we were to like just think of players that we could trade... Obviously, I have no idea who they would want on this roster. I mean, there's a lot of players that you could get. Like, for example, if I'm them, I'm probably asking for Dario. Fultz, 100%. Fultz. Even though I saw his jumper, he was working on it. Looks kind of whack. But he's going, for sure. He's probably going. Maybe Robert Covington. He had a very bad... It, Second round, he, not great. It, it, had, he it, it was pretty. Moments. It was pretty bad. He has moments. I think like game one, he was really good. But then the other games, I agree, he was pretty terrible. He's playing hot potato with the ball, so you probably could get rid of him. I mean, that's just most of Kawhi Leonard's salary. But then you probably have to give up a pick. I mean, who knows? Their pick could be end up being a top three tonight if the lottery goes their way too. Yeah. You know? So they have they have by far the most assets yeah. other than the Celtics. And the Celtics maybe could be a possible destination for Kawhi too. But I I really wouldn't be surprised if the 76ers give up. Like, why would they not want to give up Markel Fultz at this point? After the season, if you can get Kawhi in return for him and then Covington in like a top three pick, you're taking that deal any yeah. day of the week. Yeah, I mean, just thinking about the whole situation with Kawhi and Pop, obviously... Pop's likely to move Kawhi to the East. That's what he's preferred if they were to move Kawhi to the yeah. East. But they're trying to really sanctify this relationship, try to make something out of it. But there's probably it's probably too late now. The way that Kawhi Leonard's moving now with his group, yeah. the way that he has changed his opinion on things, he's changed the Spurs way mm -hmm. a lot. So I, I think this is probably a good fit for him because he's a good two-way player. He'll be a... A lot better than Robert Covington in his position. Obviously, they moved TJ McConnell into the starting lineup because of how inconsistent Robert Covington was in the playoffs. I mean, that could be a definite, definite destination for Kawhi Leonard. I just... I don't know, really. What do you think about the fit? I mean, the fit... It wouldn't be too bad because he's, he's not a bad three-point shooter. Mm -hmm. He's a great defender. But I don't know what his intentions are. Is his intentions to be the number one on a team, or is his intentions to just win another championship? And he realizes that he can't win it with the Spurs anymore because of how old their roster is, mm -hmm. so he wants to move. It all depends on what his motives is, and I want to hear it from him, but he's just not talking. Yeah. Uh, I think the fit would be pretty good as far as just pure basketball-wise, but like, if this is what Kawhi wanted, I don't think so, because he's clearly in... Philly not going to be the guy, yeah. right? Like they they're already sold on the process. Joel Embiid is the mm -hmm. guy, and Ben Simmons is guy, you know, one B, basically. So instantly, Kawhi is going to be the the third guy, mm -hmm. really. Even though basketball wise, he, right now he's clearly number one of those three. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I mean, he's getting he, he'll get a ton of spotlight, but just as far as being the superstar of a team, he's yeah. not going to be that. I, st I still am sold on what we were talking about last week in a video. I think Paul George is the best fit of any guy they can yeah. get. Because Paul George needs, I think he needs to take some time and be a third option on a team. He's a defensive three-point shooting player, even though he wasn't the greatest three-point shooter this season. That's what he does. And that is exactly what this team needs. I mean, he kind of fits the mold of some of the players they have, even, but he's better. You know, he's just a yeah. better version of guys on their team. Uh, he instantly is an improvement over J.J. Redick, yeah. Bellinelli, all those guys that are taking the two-guard spot right now. Certainly, because none of them can play defense. He can also take Robert Covington's spot as well for being like a defensive player. You have T.J. McConnell, who's not a bad piece as a backup point guard. I think second unit guy, he's great. Paul George, I think, is probably the best fit out of everyone that we talked yeah. about between LeBron, Kawhi, and George now. He just makes so much sense. I think he's... I'm not sure if he's going to be a lot cheaper, then going for a guy like Kawhi and LeBron, who are probably going to be more expensive. It would be probably the same price, honestly. Yeah, but I think for the price that you're getting for a number three superstar, 
I think it's worth the money. He's obviously not going to be your number one. He's not going to be your number two. Mm -hmm. Number three is probably the perfect fit for him. There's a lot less pressure on him than there was in Oklahoma City where he had to work with Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. I think this is the fit. I think it's the fit. What do you guys think out of those three guys? If you could pick any one of them to go with this young core of 76 players, which it's a really good core. I think... Like the the last thing I want to say about Kawhi too is just like you have to you give up so much to get him. Yeah. You know, and if you really think he's that much of a game changer, which he is, right? But do you want to give away the whole farm, basically, right? And that's Sarich, who proved to be an incredible, you know, role player on this mm -hmm. team. Markel Fultz, who could still easily turn into an incredible NBA player, and then whoever that pick becomes, you know, yeah. you're giving up a ton to get Kawhi and who knows where he is mentally. I, th I think you just try and sign Paul George. Yeah, Paul George is probably going to be the number one option. Then you go Kawhi, and then last but not least, LeBron. Nothing to sneeze at for those three options. I just think between the other two guys, Kawhi mm -hmm. and LeBron, they fit, but not well enough as a Paul George, who's like 100% a perfect match. Yeah, I mean, regardless of which way this shakes up, whoever they get, Either all these veterans are going to be gone, which most likely like JJ is gone no matter yeah. what. They can't afford to keep him. But then you, you're you giving up a lot of players. Either you're giving up all the young guys or you're giving up some older dudes to sign a player. So we'll see how it goes, guys. Tell us what you think about this 76ers offseason.